All right, this Sunday we have recent news in the college football coaching carousel as the Arkansas Razorbacks have fired Chad Morris uh, partway through his second season with the Razorbacks. Uh, so far through 22 games, Chad Morris had a 4-18 and record, zero SEC wins, uh, and he struggled to beat the likes of San Jose State, North Texas, among others. This was a move that a lot of people saw coming, especially after uh, this yesterday's game where Western Kentucky just ran them off the field. They just didn't look competitive at all. So there's no surprise that the the Razorbacks are wanting to move on. And I know some were joking because Brett Bielema got fired as he is walking off the field if uh, Chad Morris would get the same type of treatment. But he was let go this Sunday. You know, if we take a look at this air, this Arkansas job, this Arkansas program, there's room for success here. You know, Houston Nutt, as um, criticized as he was, he went 75 and 46 through his tenure, six bowl games. Bobby Petrino uh, went 34 and 17. Those guys both showed that they can win in the SEC at Arkansas. Even Brett Bielema who was there for you know a handful of years, went 29-34, and 34, and he really um, was competitive. It was just that final year that kind of, um, that 4-8 and eight year that, that saw him get fired. So Arkansas, I don't think you can put them up there with the, the Alabamas and the Auburns and the LSUs in that SEC West, but they have a chance to, to at least show some potential. And if you look at this SEC West, there is room for for growth up. You know, Ole Miss has gone down since Hugh Freeze has left. Mississippi State, since Dan Mullins left, uh, Joe Moorhead's you know looks like a solid coach, but just can't get things going there. And even Texas A&M, they're that sleeping giant, but they're still in the process of sleeping. I don't know if uh, uh, you know Fisher is going to get them going, uh, you know, to an elite team anytime soon. So. That, that spot for that fourth fourth place in the SEC West is still relatively up for grabs, uh, depending on who Arkansas hires and if they can get some talent in there. They have the room to you know get up there and be competitive because you know I think most people would think Arkansas you know you're not going to be competing for national championships. You're not going to be competing year in and year out for that SEC SEC West crown. But if you can get to the Razorbacks to bowl eligible every year, I think that's a big time accomplishment and, and it's something that your minimum expectation should be. And as I said before, Houston Nutt and Bobby Petrino have shown that you can have success in that SEC West in Fayetteville. So the question then turns to who are the Razorbacks going to hire? Who are the coaches that they uh, are going to want. And obviously, two of the top names that come up are Matt Campbell and Mike Norvell. Uh, Matt Campbell is probably at the head of most coaching opening wish lists. Uh, what he's done at Iowa State with, you know, they have talent. He's brought in some good players, but they're undermanned and he still keeps them competitive. They've pulled off some big upsets. Um, very stable. You're going to go to a bowl game every year at Iowa State. What could he do? In the SEC, what could he do at a a program that has more resources than that? I just don't think he's going to take Arkansas, and it's nothing against Arkansas. He's going to be able to pick and choose where he wants to go, and I just think if he waits, there's going to be a job that's bigger than Arkansas that's up there that he could possibly go after. Mike Norvell's the other one. He's got some. It's got some ties to the state of Arkansas. He went, you know, went to school in Central Arkansas, so he's used to the state. Has some ties to it. He's at Memphis, which isn't too far away. Um, he's got, t- you know, been a few other places. He's continued to build Memphis up, taking over from what Justin Fuente had and even elevating them even more. I think his, you look at what his teams have been at Memphis, they're, they're very ground oriented. They've, you know, last year they turned out 2,000 yard rusher and had another guy that got drafted also. So I think he would fit well within Arkansas and in that area. I think he has to be at the top of their list. It's just a matter of can they get him because I'm sure Florida State's going to be interested in him. I'm sure other schools are going to be. Uh, can they wow him enough? I think another guy that could be thrown in there, I'm not sure if he's uh, a candidate or not in their eyes, and that's Dave Clawson at Wake Forest. He's got Wake Forest in the top 25 
um, before he was with the Demon Deacons, who were not very good before he got there. He had turned Bowling Green into a good program. He, he had done it at the FCS level. A guy that's won at every single step that he's gone to. He's not flashy. He's not this big name, but he just wins games. And, you know, is he going to see going from Wake Forest to Arkansas as a lateral move? You know, probably not a lateral move. But the ACC is a lot more winnable compared to the SEC West, so he might not want to get out. And maybe him, just like Matt Campbell, is waiting for that next best opportunity that's maybe a program higher than Arkansas. A couple guys that I think are very attainable that they could go after. Seth Luttrell at North Texas um, has had a lot of success there uh, building that program up. He's a former Oklahoma uh, player, uh, worked with them. He's a guy that, you know, North Texas isn't having the best year this year, but if he goes to Arkansas, would he be able to bring in Graham Harrell, who was his offensive coordinator last year, who's probably going to get let go at USC because Clay Helton's going to get fired. So could they reunite and go to Arkansas? I think having those Texas connections, recruiting, and just being just down the road uh, from the state of Texas would be a big uh, thing for him. And, you know, he's shown, and, and North Texas looked like it was a program that was on the rise, is just hitting a bad year this year. Uh, Bill Clark is down in Alabama at UAB. Um, he, you know, UAB was having some success. They shut the program down for a full year. All their players left. He was able to kind of regroup when they reinstated the program, got it built up, and once again having success there. So if he can build a program from basically scratch, what could he do at an SEC-level school? Blake Anderson was having some success at Arkansas State. I know he had some um, medical issues with his wife and cancer. Uh, you know, Arkansas State has kind of produced a lot. You know, Gus Malzahn came from there. Hugh Freeze came from there. Blake Anderson, uh, Brian Harson was there, who's now at Boise State. Blake Anderson was that next guy. Would he leave uh, Arkansas State at this point? You know, obviously that's a big step up, but, you know, he's, he's kind of been – not coaching this year, so would that be something that he'd want to do? I'm not quite sure. Uh, they got to look at the the coordinator route, and and Andy Staples at the Athletic had a tremendous article out there looking at the coaches that are in the AP top uh, ten and where they came from, and a majority of those coaches came from being coordinators. He talked about Kirby Smart was not a head coach before he took over. Lincoln Riley wasn't a head coach, you know, so on and so forth. So. You know, whenever we look at these head coaching openings, we always look to the incumbent head coaches. Why not the the coordinators? And if that's the case, Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott at Clemson are two guys that are uh, got to be at the top of the list. What they've been doing with the Clemson program, recruiting and designing that offense, um, they're running the show. You know, Dabo is uh, a tremendous head coach, but those he those he's not one calling the plays and all that. It's these two guys designing and, and doing all that. So I think they're definitely uh, two guys to kind of keep an eye on. Now, two guys that I want to kind of – I waited to highlight because I think these two have a lot of things going for them. Maybe they're not necessarily out-of-the-box hires, but I think would they could both do very well at Arkansas. And the first one is Clemson defensive coordinator Brett Venables. Here's a guy that was at Oklahoma – had a lot of success there. The defense started faltering in the Big 12. Uh, they kind of pushed him out the door. He goes to Clemson and helps engineer you know, one of the better defensive units over the last several years. He's recruited at a high level. He's a former Kansas State player. He's actually even recruited the Midwest. You know, Isaiah Simmons, their star linebacker, is a Kansas City kid. Kansas City is only three hours away from Fayetteville. You know, he's got the Kansas State ties. He's got the Oklahoma ties. you got to assume he's got some ties into Texas. Arkansas, if you're going to have success there, you got to recruit Texas, and you got to recruit that area. The state of Arkansas doesn't have routinely put out a ton of high-caliber NFL or college prospects. Uh, right now, they have two four-star prospects in their state. So his ability to go up to Kansas City and go into Missouri, his ability to go to Kansas uh, in Kansas, maybe go to the JUCO ranks and into the Jayhawk conference in the Texas. I think that could really help him out, but he's also been very picky on where he's gone is Arkansas a school that he wants to be his first head coaching job and nothing against Arkansas, 
but he's a guy that's had a lot of offers, and potentially Kansas State was one of them. That's where he went to school, and he didn't take it. Would this be the job that gets him out? It is an SEC school. And the last one is Willie Fritz uh, that's down in Tulane. Uh, another guy that every place he's gone, he's won. Georgia Southern, uh, Tulane now. The thing about him that's different is he's more of a triple option style coaching. Now, it's not your uh, Army, Navy, you know, that style of triple option that Paul Johnson ran with Georgia Tech. Uh, he's updated it, modernized it a little bit. You've seen that's what he's done with Tulane. Tulane's continued to build, gave some scare to a lot of some big name teams. Could Arkansas look to do something different? And we saw that when Brett Bielema came. They went that ground and pound, heavy Wisconsin style. And to an extent, Brett Bielema had some success. But what if you did that, but kind of twisted a little bit and had that option offense? There's nothing, nobody in the SEC that runs anything like this. And would that different look, and it's not like it's, like I said, it's not the wishbone type offense or the, the flex bone, whatever you want to call it. Um, but would this give the SEC that advantage? And, you know, you'd be able to get linemen built for it. You'd be able to get some speed at quarterback. Could that give teams in the teams in the SEC West or even the SEC in general a lot of fits? Could. But that's something I think if Arkansas looks outside the box, Willie Fitz is somebody that you definitely have to keep an eye on. And like I said, I think Mike Norvell's their, their top choice. I think Brett Venables has got to be at the top. I think that he's got a lot of strong candidates. If he wants this job, he could have it. Um, I like the idea of Willie Fitz from, from Tulane. If I had to guess and say who I think it'll probably be, I think it's going to be Seth Luttrell. Um, that's just kind of my guess because of, you know, coming from Texas, coming from North Texas, having those ties. I think he's going to bring in Graham Harrell, and I think he's got a chance to have some success there. Uh, but it'll be anxious to see who the Arkansas Razorbacks go with with their next head coach.